Hi folks, Steve Munson here. Welcome to Outdoors 406. Today I wanted to share with you a video that I ran across recently that I thought was very informative on how they grade coyote hides when you bring them in for market uh, to sell. And uh, this is done by Grunewald Fur and Wool Company. And they were gracious enough to allow me to use this on my YouTube channel. It's worth taking the time to watch this because it's very informative. I've never seen a video that's done like this where they show you exactly what the fur buyer is looking for and what, what the market is looking for in these coyotes. So take a look at this video. I think you'll really enjoy this and learn a lot. My name is Gary Grunewald uh, from Grunewald Fur and Wool Company. And today I'm here with Bryce Kugley, uh, also with Grunewald Fur and Wool Company. And uh, we're out on the trucks. We do grading in the factory. And so we want to teach the trapper. Um, today, one goal is to teach the trapper what to skin, uh, what to save, what has commercial value, what doesn't have commercial value, uh, what we're looking for. We're even going to show you the sections of the different coyotes, maybe like the, the eastern, the midwestern, and the western. We'll show you that and uh, what's, what's usable and why. And because one of the saddest things is when you're at the truck, and someone throws a coyote up there and you know how hard a coyote is to skin and that coyote uh, you say that has no commercial value to me and uh, and, and we want to show you why and maybe want to maybe uh, this will help you in uh, in your experience getting coyotes and we want the trapper to be educated we want the hunter to be educated we want them to know the things that we know because uh, that's great for the industry so what we're going to do today is we're going to take you all the way from the animals to the stretched and dried products and we're going to take you and show you strips. Actually I want to start with the strips because this will give you an understanding of what a coyote is used for. Because in the past coyotes were used for jackets and they wanted a flatter coyote with a good belly that was white. But now they're using, they don't use it for an entire coat. They got the way. They don't use it for an entire coat. What they do use it for is trim. And uh, that's why different coyotes have different value. You can imagine something flatter, do you want that on your, in your collar? Or do you want something nice and full like that on your collar? So this is called a strip. And this is what coyotes are made into because they go around, your, around the collars like this and they go onto coats, okay? And they add value to coats. So. This is uh, what we want to show people today. So what I'm going to do is, let's get started here with the, uh, the coyotes that are just, just caught within the last couple days. And we want to show you um, how we grade. And we're just going to give you some input and give you some understanding so you know what you get out in the field. So Bryce is going to hear and show you what, what we have on the counter today. Okay, the first thing I want to show everybody is what we don't look for when you come to the truck. The first thing I'll talk about is a red coyote. Everybody gets excited when they catch a red coyote, a black coyote. But for our business, for the trimming business, where the coyotes are very popular, these have no value in the carcass. Maybe if it's very, very nice, very heavy, very clean, you might get a couple bucks for it. But other than that, uh, these have no value. So e exactly why is that? Because I mean, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, they just showed you the strips. I mean, can't, can't you make one out of that? But if somebody wants to put it in their line, you don't buy enough quantity of it for the year. Oh, okay. And a lot of times they're poor coyotes overall, and they just they don't like to use them. And the color, it's not a trend for, right. the, for the trims. So that's the red coyotes. Black coyotes are the same way, maybe for a taxidermist, maybe for a novelty item. They like to buy them, but you can't buy enough quantities of them to make them work in somebody's fashion line that's selling thousands and tens of thousands of these a year. Okay. So now we'll go to the bad neck coyotes. This is the worst thing we don't want to see once you come to the truck. As you see here, there's no guard hairs. And there's the underwolves here, there's no guard hairs covering here. If you take this coyote here, and you try to make a trim like this out of there, where are you going to get it from? If you cut something like this, it's going to be so open, so ugly, and nobody will want to put that on their coat. Some of the coyotes that people catch have a bad neck, but the back, and this coyote, the, the back is not very good, but what if the back is perfect uh, from, from here down? Uh, why can't that be worth half as much? 
Let me, what, can I explain that? Yeah. Well, first of all, you have to figure of time and labor to put into a coyote to make something like this. How many of these can you get out of this coyote? Now, if, say you could get one out of this, one trim out of this coyote here. And why doesn't that have commercial value? Well, you have to skin it, you have to stretch and dry it, you have to ship it, you have to cut it, you have to dress, dress it. it. Dress, dress it, it is uh, $15 or you know, somewhere in that neighborhood. And it's $15 whether it's this coyote or whether it's a perfectly clean coyote. It's the same, it's the same, same cost. cost. It's, it's exactly the same cost. So now you can see that this coyote has to be, it has to have, it has to have, it has no commercial value because you can't get but maybe one strip out of it, therefore it's not worth, it's not worth keeping. Okay. 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 So now we'll move on to the next thing. This for a trapper and even as a fur buyer, this coyote right here is the toughest one for all of us to be able to grade. If you look at this coyote right here, it actually looks pretty nice. But to show you here, in the hips back here, if you can see down in there, and I, I can feel it, you guys can't, but it's all matted down here, which a lot of times after dress, that will not come out. Once you, that's coyote's dress, that's there, and that will not look nice on a trim as well. Also, if you can see here, it is not full of guard hairs. The under wool is all there, all the way up through it, but you see as I put my hand through it there, it's so open, the guard hairs are not filled through there, so this coyote is actually a damaged coyote. This whole back part, it's the opposite of this first coyote almost, if the back was clean on it. This coyote here, the neck's pretty full through there, but that's only the top half that's usable. This whole back half is unusable because you see it's open, the guard hairs are not filled. So that would act is what we consider a damaged coyote right there. So it doesn't have to be a hole to actually be damaged. It does not have to be a hole, it can be, uh, missing guard hairs, it could be rubbed, um, it could be very matted. A lot of times they get matted back in the hips. But that's the toughest one for everybody to see it because it looks like it's actually a decent coyote. Here you can see the whole side is open, down in there. Where you look down here where it's furred, it looks better, it's actually fur down there. Here you look, it's just open gray underwool. Okay, yeah, I call that I call that like a feathered, like a like it's a, a feathered rub because for a big area of it, <clears throat> the guard hairs are almost like systematically plucked out, and uh, that's what makes it open. Uh, it could be from cockleburs, uh, could be the environment it's living in. We have one interesting. Okay, then Bryce will show you this one. This is this is a. Uh, go ahead and show them that. One. Okay, this is a nice coyote here. You can see the back here. It's all filled. You see how you go all the way through, the guard hairs are there, the under wool's all there. This right here is what we'd consider a slight damaged coyote because it has one rub right here on the side. That's the one spot on this coyote that will not be usable. Everything else there, they'll cut that out, they'll work around that, and they'll be able to get uh, almost a full coyote worth of trims out of this coyote. So if no customers mind how buying many, something How many like trims this. is a full? Uh, is a full coyote make? It depends on what size trims you're using. Some guys get up to seven trims out of a coyote if they're making something really thin, maybe more. But the average on a real nice coyote, I would say is five to six. And on a poor coyote, uh, one and a half to two trims. Okay. There they come. Yeah, let, me, let me show them this one, this one aspect of coyotes that happen once it snows. Now this one is, uh, you see it's a little bit more westerny type. Bryce will tell you more about that later. But coyotes, what they do is they sun themselves out in the snow and they have a body temperature that starts to melt the snow and uh, the melting the snow and uh, the freezing of the temperature, a coyote lays in one spot. As you can see here, this coyote here has a pull mark where it pulled out of the snow because we've had some snow recently. So it was sitting in somewhere snowing, uh, sunning itself, sat in the snow and then it uh, pulled its fur out as it, it as yeah it freezes it free this fur freezes to the snow and then when it leaves it pulls pulls the fur out and this one it looks pretty good it looks good but you can see it's starting to feather right in this area here and sure enough if you look down in there like we showed you you see the the pull mark there so this is also a slight a slight damaged coyote okay go ahead Okay, now we'll go to the clean coyotes here. And as I'm doing the clean coyotes, I'll show you a little bit. More importantly than uh, 
the color of a coyote anymore, the heft is the most important thing. Maybe a couple years ago, the Western coyotes, everybody hears the Western coyotes, they bring crazy money, $100, $110, $120. That was double of what a, uh, in Midwest type coyote, something like this would bring two years ago. Now the coyote is so in fashion, they want something as heavy as they can get it. And you see here, this is so full, the hair's long and the underwool, it's so, it's full, cushiony there. That's considered a heavy coyote. And you see all the way through it, it has no damage at all. The sides all the way covered. The belly's full. The back is full. And if you see the difference here, Gary, will you bring me that four neck coyote there? We'll just put these two next to, next to each other here. You can see the difference on how they look and why this one here could bring maybe 50 or $60 in the carcass, and this one is worth absolutely nothing. This one, they'll get full, it's a big coyote. They'll get five, six, seven trims out of it, and the customer will be very happy with that coyote in the end. See the other side too? Everything's filled all the way through, there's no damages. You said this was a clean coyote, and yet I saw a little blood that there was a bullet hole in it. What, what, is, a, what is a bullet hole? Have, uh, does that make it a slide automatically or not? Uh, as long as the whole side's not blown out of it, if it's a very small hole, okay. it does not automatically make it a slide. If okay. you put a big slug into it and it puts a big hole or you shoot it a couple times, it could be a slide or damage after that. So this is a heavy coyote. The one next to it, pretty similar in color. Uh, that's just a little, that, that'll comb right out, a little bullet hole there, a little blood, but it's nothing, nothing huge that won't make it a slide. But the difference between these two coyotes could be a uh, $20, $30 difference in price only because this one is, is not quite as long. You see the underwool is all there. It's full all the way through. But you see how my hands just goes over top of that. That's what we consider a semi-heavy coyote. To where I go to this one, my hand almost gets lost, lost down in the fur. It's, it's a heavy coyote. So what we're looking for, both of these are very marketable. Both of these are used for the same thing, trimming. These ones are just able to be sold for more money than the semi-heavies are, but everything's usable in all these coyotes. You might get the same amount of strips out of this one as you get out of this one, but since this is a heavier fur, it will bring more money to the fashion industry. Okay, brother. Good. So, just, I want to reiterate one thing. This is a uh, this is what that systematic rub that we see on these coyotes. This happens often. Someone thinks they, they got a really good coyote, but you can see this one here. It's also, if you feel down in the fur, it feels matty, but you also see guard hairs are missing. So this is something that's hard for a beginning trapper. It's hard for a, even a beginning fur buyer to actually see, but this really drastically reduces the value of a a coyote because you can't get a nice flowy strip with it because you have to think you have to think about like what's going to look good on someone's collar you know do you want that on your collar do you want to be wearing that do you want that against your neck do you want that against your face um, and then when the wind hits this all you would see on this is just gray versus this you see you see nice and good long uh, long guard hairs that are standing up so that's the goal. You have to get that in your mind as a trapper, as a hunter. Like, what are they, you know, what are they using these for? So I just wanted to make sure you saw that. Bryce, why don't you show them the difference between an Eastern and a Western and a, and a Midwestern? So I'll, show you, I'll show you right here. Can you move some of those over, Gary? I'll just show you in the field here, in the carcass. You can see the difference right here between a Western, and we call this a Midwestern. It's a little darker, it's a little softer, it's not quite an Eastern. Where would a Midwestern come from versus a Western? Uh, Midwestern would come from you know Eastern Nebraska, Iowa, Illinois, Wisconsin, uh, Minnesota. And then you get a little further east, you'll get more some Easterns in some of those states, especially Illinois, uh, Wisconsin. Uh, Minnesota. Uh, Michigan, you'll get the Midwest ki type coyotes out of. And if you're way Western Michigan, you know you might get something like this too. But I'll show you, Westerns are known for having a, a wider belly. See there, there. And then the fur will be softer and it'll have a be paler in color. Where you see this belly of Midwest type coyote, 
It's still, it's a little, it's a little white, but it has the creamy color look to it, a little more yellow. And the price difference between these, like I mentioned earlier, uh, it, there is a difference in price, but it's not as big as it was two years ago. Um, people, this is very well usable for the same thing as the Western Coyotes have been for many years. Now I'll show you that. Can you move those down, Gary? Now, if we put all three together, it'll be easy to stand out to you in the light here. Oh. Now, if you got any questions out there, you can ask us. If you have any questions, uh, we'll, we're more than happy to uh, answer your questions. So we'll start with the we'll start with the western, obviously. Belly, nice, clear, white belly. Uh, paler. What, what does the belly matter? Beans are only using them for trim. Yes, because they still will use some of the bottom of the belly. It's not They're not using them for coats like they used to, where a lot of guys that come to the truck, they ask, uh, oh, is the belly, is the belly important? Because that's what they heard maybe 10 years ago, 8 years ago, 12 years ago, that the belly was the most important part of the coyote. It still is important. You don't want a poor belly, but it's not like it was back in the day when they were using these for the belly coats. So then the one next to it, we call a Midwest coyote right here. You see if you compare them to each other. This one is going to be a little darker. It's actually probably from a Iowa, Illinois type coyote right here. But it's a little softer, a little darker, and it has a little more coarser hairs coming through the middle there. Where this is pretty soft all the way through it. And then you get to an eastern coyote, which the price will say for itself. These are the, most people call the prettiest. These are very good, and this is the ugliest type of coyote you can get. You see everything is very dark, black, red, and the hairs on it are all very coarse. But this one here is actually a flat coyote. It has no underwool, you see that. These coyotes are not used for trimming because like they show you there, who wants to put something that's not poofy on the collar of their coat? See the side of that? Poofy or puffy? Either one. <laughs> Is that poofy? Compared, that to is something, poofy? compared to something like that. That's poofy. P-U-F-F-Y. That'd be puffy. Yeah. <laughs> P-U, what do you got? P-O-O. -O. Okay, there's one thing. Okay, I think he did a good job explaining that. Um, there's one thing I just want to explain about uh, in terms of, uh, you could say diseases. A lot of people come to the truck and they say, uh, my, coat, my coyote had uh, mange. And a lot of time it's not mange, it's, it's, actually, a, it's actually just a, a bad neck. And now, mane, mane and mange, M-A-N-E is mane, mange is M-A-N-G. Mange is a parasitic uh, mite that gets into the skin. And uh, it can start at the tail, it can work in any part of the animal, the whole animal can be covered. It can actually uh, be transferred to a human. So the mange, M-A-N-G, you have to be careful with. But people say, many times they say, my coyote had, had the mange, and it doesn't have the mange, all it had was a, you know, a bad neck, and that bad neck could be cut because a, a coyote has lice back there, and it's rubbing its neck on, you know, on a fence post or on, on, on some, on some uh, briars or something out in the woods to try to get rid of that itch. Um, so that's... That's the difference between this is the mane of the coyote, uh, which is often gone, or the grots they call it in the uh, in the the term for the fur industry, and then also mange. So this this coyote also this has another disease, and I want to show you this. You can actually see a larger type of mite that is actually in this, and sometimes you'll see these you'll see these mites, you see these mites are in this, and they're little bitty speckled mite mites. And what happens is they, they, get, they get clustered in the fur and it brings an oil all through the underwool and this coyote will start to stink. It can't, the fur doesn't clean itself properly and it has a stench to it. That coyote also is, doesn't have any commercial value because it'll look fine on the top, but all through the underwool is filled with oily, uh, matted underwool. And that's because there's a mite inside of that hair working and, and the coyote can't re, uh, clean itself properly. So those, those are just some diseases that, uh, that coyotes have. So, and also mane, M-A-N-E, and mange, M-A-N-G-E, 
Mange is when the, the parasitic mite gets into the skin. Okay, just so we're, we know what we're talking about out there. Okay, I just want to make that clear because some people talk about mange. And, uh, it's, the coyote doesn't have mange, it just has a bad mane. And or it's been itching, it's been itching a mite, uh, it's been itching a, a tick or something on, or a place where it has an itch and it loses guard area. And also, I think uh, some reason why coyotes in certain areas have bad necks is it could also be uh, uh, just in the gene pools. It could be, because you'll see a long, coarse hair coming off of a, the back of a, of a coyote. It looks like a horse, actually. And there's no damage in it at all. It's just long, coarse hair. And that, that can't be used also because you don't want that on your collar. Okay? So, um, I think you guys learned some things today. Just a little quick review. Remember, remember to think about these when you're out there uh, hunting or trapping. Like this is the final goal. This is the final goal of a coyote. It's going to be used for trim. Okay. Um, uh, talk to us. Talk to us if you uh, have any questions. You can email us. You can send us a message on Facebook. Um, we want you to be informed so you guys know. Uh, what we're looking for. Uh, if you have any questions about selling your fur, contact us. You know how to sell it, where to meet us, uh, how to ship it to us. Okay. Now, I also want to add. Now the coyotes are becoming very prime. Uh, the value of them will be more than it was in the last three weeks, and we're open to buy all coyotes from all sections. Uh, we're paying a very aggressive price, and uh, we need them to support the fashion industry. So if you have any questions, uh, call anytime, and we'll see you at the truck. Hopefully. What's your website? www.gfwco.com. That'll have our phone number, everything. You want to like us also, I think, right? On Facebook? Oh, yeah. Facebook? Thank you for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video.